Our primary curriculum is a gentle feast, which is a Charlotte Mason approach. And I've sh shared a little bit of that in a previous video, so you can take a look at that. But let me just show you some of what I do specifically for my third grader. And maybe this will give you some ideas for yours. After our morning meeting, I have my son sit down and do his some of his book work, and that includes the Gentle Feast Language Arts, which has copy work in each, spelling words that are part of the copy work, then it has a, a small drawing assignment, composition where they can just write, and a spelling or grammatical correctness is not what your um, was not the goal for this. It's just kind of getting getting them used to that. Written composition doesn't happen until fourth grade in a Charlotte Mason education. And then a grammar focus, as well as a, a dictation, which is showing the, the spelling words from that week, from that week's copy work. So you can see here, he's done this, some of this correctly. Um, some that he doesn't love the composition. We're still working on that. We do oral narrations with most of all of our history, literature, um, nature lore, Bible readings, so he's really getting a lot of practice with that. He did draw a beehive, which I was proud of him for that. So this is just wonderful. It's all in one. Uh, Gentle Feast also has these for um, form one, two, three, and four, but this is form one. Next year he'll be doing form two for fourth grade. I also have for him, um, we do some of the My Father's World, uh, which is uh, adventures in my... We also do the My Father's World Adventures in U.S. History, which is a second and third grade program for students. So we started this last year and we're still doing it, which is fine. Um, I, I like this because it related to um, some of what we were doing before, some great copy work. And now we're at the, uh, kind of the tail end of that, studying the different states, which really works well because the um, the history year we are in Gentle Feast is cycle three, which is the 1800s, and that's when a lot of the states um, became part of the United States. So I have him, we just talk about the state, talk about some of the facts. We don't read all of this, but um, we have a sticker for each state flag and then one of these cards for the state bird and state flower. And then I have this, and I really like this just simple cursive practice. This is exploring handwriting through U.S. geography. And third grade, there is a lot of focus on geography. I think this is a great time for them to know all your, their states and capitals. And so he is, um, he always abbreviates United States of America with USA. He's very sneaky like that. But I don't make him do every single one. We normally stop about here. He doesn't need to know all the rivers and the highest points in each but it's just getting a familiarity and having some nice cursive practice, changing it up. So every day he's gonna do a cursive sentence, one or two things in the language arts. He also has, this is as part of Gentle Feast, an American Geo Journey. And then that is just labeling with abbreviations, again, getting more geography practice. And then a Gentle Feast has some fun playlists based on these regions that he can watch sometimes. So after he does two or three things here, most days it's three things. It's going to be three sentences or just three separate little things that he's going to do. He has he gets to take his time. Then I have him read a chapter, a couple chapters out of some of these history readers, which are really great. We also um, uh, will move on to harder chapter books, but this has been great for him. Dust for Dinner, Escape North. First Flight. So these are some really great history readers that we've liked. We also like the um, the Usborne Level 4 books. But I really like these historical, kind of more living, living stories about different history stories. So we have a bunch of these in the basement. And I, every week, he, he could go through this in two days. I, I have him read about half one day and half the other day. And he tends to really enjoy this. He reads these upstairs in his room with his Legos. So he does these, then he moves on to do his um, independent reading, and then he practices two songs on his piano twice through, which really doesn't take him very long. Um, it's a challenge getting him there, but he does do it. And then he has free time until math, and during that time I'm going to be working with his younger sisters. But I will show you his math. For our math, we use Right Start Math, and this was really the perfect program. And I'm just showing you our boxes of manipulatives, so you can just see it comes with um, both tangrams, um, 3D geometric shapes. This is a, um, a, a tool to work with symmetry. 
geometry panels, which we've made with rubber bands to make these. Lots of rubber bands, rulers, measuring tapes, um, fraction pieces. Uh, what are these called? Geo boards, I think, with the rubber bands. Lots of different types of a T-board to work with creating um, geometric shapes. A yardstick that's pulled out. I really love all of the pieces that come with this. We have the centimeter cubes and the inch tiles here. And I have them all in these two bins. And then I have all of our games that's included in the program, which I'll show you the book in just a minute. So you can just see here how we organize it like that. This is the math card games with Right Start Math, and each lesson tells you, okay, C13 or M8, you're gonna be looking through that particular game and playing together and it really has great straightforward instructions so here are the books i have these in an ikea cart where i just sit down at this table and work together with him after i've worked with his sisters i love this awesome abacus that's unique to the right start program dr joan cotter she made this program and i love that you learn place value with this abacus I began this curriculum after trying many others, almost every other one that weren't a right fit. And I'm just so, that, that's kind of a pun. Now I find the, found the right fit for my son. He didn't need anything that was too, um, too flowery, too, if it had colors or, you know, games. And Well, he does like the card games. We don't do every single lesson. Some of them have a, a game included. We don't do that every single time. But here we have um, the lesson. We always start with a warm-up and then a game, perhaps, and then you jump into the worksheet. So here we're on level D, which is either third or fourth grade. I'm not sure. He is third grade, but this program, as far as I have heard, it is pretty advanced program and he really enjoys it. So, um, and by enjoying it, I mean he does well. Uh, math is not his favorite subject, but I love how this puts together all different subjects. I'd call it a spiral program, but also with a lot of Montessori principles. And it's really, really sound. I've really enjoyed working on this program with him. We've done level um, the end of level B, then all of C, and now we're on D, and we will continue to use this with my son. I use something different for my first grade daughter, and I think that every child has different needs. So alongside our morning meeting, and then his independent language arts time, his independent reading, his piano practice, and his math time over in the other room, I also have him make sure he's doing his nature journaling once a week. He's not one who loves art, so this is a bit of a challenge sometime for him, but look at this amazing ladybug that he's drawn. Um, we have some books, so a lot of nature books that we share with him to get inspiration, but whatever our nature lore book is based on, I, I give him a couple ideas. You can draw a woodpecker or a bee, and um, he drew a bee another beehive, so that's exciting. So he has his own spiral book along with his own pencils in a basket for him to do that. Um, all of our history readings, literature readings, and um, the other beauty loops such as composer, art, appreciation, music, folk songs, sofa, um, foreign language, tin whistle, those types of things we do all together, which I've shared in a different video, but that these are the core subjects that we do for him as a third grader. And so I hope this has really helped you kind of look at what we do. Every child has different needs. So that's why I homeschool, because I can differentiate what he absolutely needs. Um, he needs movement, he needs to be outside for breaks in the middle of these subjects, and that's okay. We don't, necess we don't necessarily start at 8 a.m., we actually don't. Um, and in the afternoons, he can play outside, he can play with his um, Ninjagos and his Transformers. We have a lot of different activities Activities we go to as well. He does a Montessori math class. We do piano lessons. He's in Science Olympiad. We do all day Thursday. We do groups with kids. So homeschooling for us has just been um, time for him to have independence, time for him to explore his own um, 
creativity for him to want to create things on his own. He creates comics on his own. He likes to create stop motion videos. He is always uh, working on snap circuits or magic shows. So I love just, um, hopefully we've created uh, or cultivated an environment here that has helped him to learn and invest in the things that he cares about. And that's, that's truly my hope for you and hopefully this has helped you. Thanks.